Hi everybody, I'm Phil with LS2 and today I want to talk a little bit about helmet technology, uh, particularly shell technology. I've been in the motorcycle industry for a little over 40 years. Uh, I've been specializing in helmets for about 18 of those years and uh, a lot's changed in the industry. And I often hear considerations from people, uh, ideas that they think are the truth and at one time they were because the truth is what we all agree to be true basically. Uh, we've learned a lot. You know, there was a time when everybody agreed that human beings couldn't fly, and now we fly every day. Um, so, I remember back in the early 70s, there were ads for one particular brand of helmet that they had an open face helmet, and they wanted to show how strong their shell was. And, and because of the technology of the day, they literally took a balloon and they blew it up and stuffed it inside this open face helmet. They drew a face on it. And then they leaned a uh, 650 Triumph over, leaning the foot peg against the helmet, crushing the helmet. And they, they showed how much less theirs flexed than, than their competitors, which they did the same thing. Of course, the competitor's shell was crushed down to almost nothing. The concept being that that super strong shell was going to keep you safer. Well, uh, you might also remember the, you know, somewhere in your life, uh, particularly if you're over maybe 35, 40 years old, uh, there was a time when a lot of people thought that a big, strong steel car, like a 57 Chevy, was the way to go if you wanted to keep your family safe. I, I heard it so many times, it's just part of my life. Uh, that big, strong truck or the big, strong Suburban, I, I want steel wrapped around my family. Well, you know, in the 70s uh, and forward, we started to learn about things called crumple zones in, in cars and realized that big and strong sounds good, but it can give, but it can't take. In other words, it can take, it can push, it can smash the smaller car into bits, but it doesn't give, and therefore it transfers all that energy directly to the passengers. So now they build cars that are lighter and uh, actually have zones that crumple like an accordion, and they, they disperse that energy and absorb that energy before it gets to the passenger compartment. I, I've seen videos, uh, in fact, if I can find one, I'll include a link to one here, where they show a big car against a small car. And the big car ends up being bent and you can't open the door. And the little car that was the big old steel car and the new car that, that's super lightweight and really small smashes the front end, smashes it nothing. But the guy walks over and opens the car door because the compartment, the passenger compartment was safe because of all that energy being absorbed by the front of the car. It's a long way around the bend to get to what I want to talk about. But there was this concept that helmet shells had to be very strong. No give. Uh, some of the manufacturers actually would put out videos showing people standing on their shells or, or explaining how you know, that band around the bottom kept that helmet super strong. To me, that's the old idea. We now know that crumple zones in cars work, that a little bit of flex helps disperse energy. So we build products that, that do exactly that. This is our new uh, subverter, it's a motocross helmet. This is made out of kinetic polymer alloy, and I'll do another video where I tell you a little bit more about that. It's a really cool material. But you'll see that it has some flex. It gives a little bit. That is part of the energy management system of the helmet, and it, it helps to absorb that energy before it ever gets to the inner crushable EPS, therefore dispersing energy that that EPS then doesn't have to absorb. Here we've got a full carbon. This is an older version of our aero road racing helmet. It's a full carbon helmet. At a little bit of Kevlar reinforcement, but once again, you can see that there's flex. It's interesting as we've talked to MotoGP riders through the years, uh, most of them now have come to the conclusion that they want a little bit of flexibility in their helmet. So when uh, people grab the helmet and, and do this with it, go, oh look, it, it flexes. That's probably a good thing in today's world. You can see I've just shown you two examples of the best, and if you could see the test reports on these, you would see they test very, very well. Uh, so that's it for the moment. I just want to want to transfer that on that uh, Absorbing energy is the job of the helmet We don't really want something that's so hard that it drives that energy straight into your jaw or your head or your neck We want to absorb that energy as much as we can before it ever gets there So I hope you find that helpful and uh, I hope you'll stop by ls2helmets.us to learn more about ls2